Hey guys, it's Belinda. I just released a video on why I think shipping container homes are a scam. If you haven't watched it, I'll link it up here. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a parametric shipping container family. The 20 foot and the 40 foot standard shipping containers are two of the most widely used containers in the world to transport ocean freight goods. In this video, we're going to make the standard eight foot wide by eight and a half foot tall container. We will have three Revit families, one for the doors, one for the siding, and one for the entire container. We will have a parameter that controls the length of the container, either 10 feet or 20 feet or 40 feet. And we will also set up another angle parameter that controls the angle of the doors so that at zero degrees, the doors will be closed. And at 90 degrees, the doors will be open. Let's create the first Revit family, which will be a single shipping container door. It's going to be a generic model family. I'm going to open up the front elevation and create a simple extrusion. This door is going to be four feet wide and eight and a half feet tall. I'll offset the outline three inches to the inside to create a border. This door is going to be three inches thick. So I'll change the end of the extrusion to three inches. Now let's open up the left elevation to create a thin corrugated sheet inside the frame. I'll start with another solid extrusion and I'll inset the lines half inch on each side. I'll create three lines where the steel is going to be bent and I'll use a dimension string to equally space these lines out. I'll draw a simple bend and copy that profile over to the other two locations below. Then I'm going to split and trim the lines to clean them up. I'll offset this final outline to create a thickness and then hit a tick mark when it's done. I'll go back to the front elevation and just clean up the extents of this second extrusion so that the entire door frame is filled. Okay, that'll work for now. Let's create a second Revit family for the overall shipping container. It's going to be a generic model family as well. I'm going to load the door into this new family and I'll make four instances of this door and move them to the opposite sides. Now I'm going to create two reference planes that will control the length of the container. I'll create a dimension line for the reference planes so that they're equally spaced on either side of the Y axis. And then I'll create an overall dimension, which is 20 feet right now. I'll select this 20 foot dimension line and create a type parameter from it. So this will control the overall length of the shipping container. I'll move the doors to the reference lines and I'm going to rotate one of these doors 45 degrees. I want to pin the edge of this door to the reference line. So I'll use the align tool or the shortcut AL, select the reference line first, and then the very corner of the door. And then I'll hit the lock button so that it is locked to the reference line. I'll mirror this door below and then repeat the same steps. I'll use the align tool, select the reference plane, and then select the very edge of this door and lock it in place. Now let's mirror these two doors again to the opposite size of the container and repeat the steps. Now let's create an angle dimension between the reference line and the door. So that should be 45 degrees. And I'm going to convert this into an instance parameter. So this instance parameter will control the angle of the four doors and you can change the angles independently. Now let's go to the left elevation to create rails. The first extrusion will be a frame behind the doors. So it will be eight feet by eight and a half feet and I'll inset that uh, three inches. This thickness will also be three inches, but right now it is tied to the Y axis. So I'm going to change the plane that it's associated with from the Y axis to the left reference plane that we created. So that frame moves all the way to the left. Let's copy that over and move the frame to the reference plane on the right. Now let's go back to the left elevation to create another extrusion. This will make the four end rails from one end to the other. So I'll make a solid square profile at the end of the frame and then copy or mirror it over to all the four ends. Now we'll go to the front elevation and lock the edges of these four rails to the two reference line by hitting the align tool or the shortcut AL and then hitting the edge of the, the rails and then the lock icon. Now let's open the family types to test the length and the angle parameters. So if we change the length from 
10 feet to 20 feet, the overall length increases and the doors move along with it. If we change the angle parameter, the doors rotate accordingly. So zero degrees would mean that they're closed and 45 would mean they're open halfway. And then 90 degrees would mean that they open all the way. Now let's create a third Revit family for the corrugated metal siding. And this will also be a generic model. We'll create a solid sweep. Uh, the first thing to do is create an outline eight and a half feet tall by eight feet wide. And then I'll offset it half an inch to the inside. When this is done, I'll create a profile that is 12 inches in width, which will have a bump out. So this is just one corrugated panel. Now this profile we made is going to be extruded along the entire rectangular main profile that we drew earlier. So this is our final output. Let's import this into our shipping container Revit family. I'm going to lock this to the x-axis by using the align tool again and then hitting the lock icon. And I'll then lock it to the left reference plane by selecting the reference plane and then the edge of this profile. The next thing to do is create an array. You can either use this icon up here or the shortcut AR. Be sure to select the last option and not the second. This will let us control the number of instances between the first and the last. Now, when we change the number of the array, you can see that the number of corrugated profiles changes. Let's create a parameter that will control the number of instances so that it changes when we change the overall length of the container. If the length is 20 feet, we need 20 instances. So we're going to use a formula length divided by one. Now let's check if all three parameters work by using the family types dialog box again. When we change the length parameter, the overall shipping container changes in length and so does the number of corrugated profiles and the angle parameter of our doors works as well. Now let's import this into a project. To control the angle of the doors, you can change it in the properties panel since it's an instance parameter. So it can be zero degrees or 90 degrees and it doesn't affect the shipping container right next to it. However, the length parameter is a type parameter, so that will be controlled under family types. So when we change that from 20 to 40 feet, you can see that both instances of the shipping container change. And that's it. I'll provide a link in the description where you can download the shipping container family for free. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching. Thank you.